Hello everybody, Stuart from Riku here. Today I just wanted to make a quick video about the Aleph Alpha Q&A model. I see a lot of uh, talk and a lot of interest in embeddings at the moment. Embeddings by OpenAI, they released a new model which is pretty cool. We're in the process of integrating it but there's also other options about and the Q&A model by Aleph Alpha is really quite powerful and it gets you to the same sort of workflow. It's easier to use without code. And we're gonna show you how you can use that today. So imagine you are an Airbnb host. You host a property, you have many people inquiring about potentially staying, and it gets tiring, right? If you're answering the same questions over and over, then it's tiring, you could be more efficient, you could probably get AI to help you out. So what if you gave all the details for your property into a document, you uploaded that document, or you just had it in plain text, and you let AI look through the document, find the relevant points, and then you could feed it into another AI model to get it spat out in a conversational manner, which you could then copy and paste to the guest in Airbnb or if you're using the Airbnb API you could make that process even easier and even more automatic so we're all about trying to save time and if we can do that without using code and doing it simply then there's a lot of time saving that can be done so I am in Riku you see that I've set up this prompt like this you are a hotel receptionist for Sea Sky Resort on PP Island. You help backpackers to the island with any questions that they have, and you give a lengthy and thorough answer with the context that is provided in a helpful, smiling, courteous manner, answering only the question that is asked. Try to upsell the guests if they ask about activities. Then we are providing a context, and the context is what we are going to get from Aleph Alpha. So you see here, when I was just testing this out, I had the question, what is the bungalow like? And you'll see I had put this into Aleph Alpha. I have all the information from my document in here, and we have the answers here. And what I've done was I just copy and pasted these outputs into the context, then I put my question below, and then I put my answer after we had our stop sequence here. I put the temperature at 0.8, I've been sort of experimenting between 0.8 and 1 for this, um, and I just let it write, and I think this is a really good output that it's provided for me here. Let's just delete this to get another version, just to show you that it works like this and maybe we'll just do an output where we put the temperature at one um, and we see how that affects things. So we're using a model by Aleph Alpha and we're pushing it into DaVinci here. We could use anything by a 21 Cohere, Muse, open source models or any of our fine tuned models. So you know, one of the real advantages of Riku is that we bring all of this stuff into one place for you to play with and enjoy. And we're going to be doing this also by hooking up this Aleph Alpha Q&A model. And we're also going to be hooking up some OpenAI embeddings. But that takes another step if you want to use it in a process like this. Because you need to use a tool like Pinecone to actually create the vector database. What I really like about what Aleph Alpha have done is it's an embeddings model. But there's none of the you know mapping out the, uh, the database and zoning it incorrectly and having to go through all that process which tends to be quite code heavy and if we can do that without code then all the better so we got our second output here it's provided all the information that the guests would need to know about the bungalow and it's also given information on tours which is the upsell here so that's really good i would be more than happy to copy and paste this into an Airbnb answer for one of our guests. Um, I've been running an Airbnb side business for many years now and technology like this really helps us to uh, to keep things as efficient as possible. So let's go for another one. Let's go for how do I get to the property 
from the peer and we can hit submit and I believe that I put something in the document that should get picked up here let's just see if it does so it's running the answer now and we have we have the information here so what we can do again is i'm just going to paste all of this into the context we probably don't need it all and if i was to map this out manually i would uh right if we if we were to do this automatically we could have it all in one one flow where it's chained together and you would not need to do this stuff yourself so there's way too much information here and i could probably settle this by putting the max tokens down to like 100 or something i think that would probably be a lot better and what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the same question and i'm going to paste it in here and i'm going to remove the answer go back to here and then i am going to hit generate on this so we've provided the context again remember we are not wanting to do this manually so even though i read some of the context what i want to happen is for that to be automatically sent then within this prompt to go to OpenAI's DaVinci and then get the question answered based on this information. So let's see what it says. So we've got great question. To get to the Sea Sky Resort from the pier, we offer a complimentary shuttle service that would take you and your luggage directly to the property. Our staff will be more than happy to help you with your luggage. They'll put it in a trolley and make sure that you don't have to walk with a heavy load. If you're looking for some additional activities while on the island, Please feel free to ask any of the receptionists. We'd love to help. So that's really funny that it's still sort of taking in the uh, try to upsell the guests if they ask about activities. And I think one of the things that I could have done better here when I was putting this document together would be to probably add some information like, you know, if you want to make use of this service, please let us know the time that you will be arriving on the island so we can get it set up for you. And then that would also be within the context. But you can see here, it's rewrote the information that is provided here in a very nice, simple manner to understand and a friendly manner, which we could just copy and paste or directly with the Airbnb API or any of the services that hook into the API if you're using a channel manager or a PMS service um, to give the answer that you want. So for somebody who is running Airbnb properties and wants to save a lot of time, all they would have to do is make a very detailed document with everything about that property, everything about their policies and then they would be able to do something where they hook up a workflow like this to then uh, give the AI what they need. And using these models is incredibly cheap. I'll show you that in a second. So let's go for a, another question. Um what shall we go with uh let's go for i like to party is it possible to party on pp island let's see a party man over here so we're gonna hit submit I think we have something in this document about parties on the beach late at night and PP being a party island. Uh, yes, it is possible to party on PP island. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is we're just going to copy all this in and we are going to take each of these. And 
I believe that this first one is just cropping off the actual bit that we want. So it's going to be interesting to see whether this can do this. And remember, what are the advantages of using these models with an AI model on top is that the AI does have a basic understanding of some of these locations and some of the things that happen. So uh, let's see. It might know about the parties or this might be our first failure and we could probably fix this in the future by making this document more thorough. I think any of the downfalls or shortcomings of this document at the moment would be because I just did it very quickly um, and I didn't take enough care and attention to make it as thorough and as in-depth as it should be. But this is the answer we've got. Yes, it is possible to party on PP Island. There are lots of bars and clubs located around the main areas of the island, as well as night beach parties at Lodalum Bay, Lodalum Beach. We can highly recommend heading to the Ban Nam Rin Bar and Club for a great night out. Of course, there are also many activities to do alongside partying, and it's uh, trying to upsell tours again. So that's that's quite funny. Um, Ban Nam Rin Bar. Not sure if this is actually a bar on PP. Let's find out. Uh, doesn't seem to be a bar, so it's just made that up. So this is also sort of showcasing uh, about the shortcomings of the technology and making things up. But if I was to do this document in more depth and actually provide details and examples of places to go and real names and stuff like that, then we wouldn't run into an issue like this. You know, this document at the moment is not very long. You see, it's just a couple of paragraphs. If I was to make it a lot more thorough, I would get a lot better outputs. And for what we've tried to showcase here, it's just giving you a taster of what is possible here. We're using it for an Airbnb property here. You could use it for a company. You could use it for, you know, querying HR policies. You could use it for querying um, terms and conditions. You could, you could use it for querying a help center or a guidebook. You could use it for a bunch of different things. And by doing something like this, you can actually add memory as you go. So imagine if we were also using something like this for a chatbot or, you know, like messaging. Every time we're going to be querying the document, but that doesn't mean that we can't add to the document every time. So as the conversation goes on, we're adding more memories, more details to that document so that when we query it and when we query it, it knows what has happened before. It has that context and it's going to give you more outputs. And this is sort of how ChatGPT works in, in a little sort of very, very basic sense. And it's possible to build something like that without code and with having a pretty long memory because you're not limited by tokens of traditional AI models. So I hope this video has been useful to you. I hope it's given you a few ideas about how you can use these Q&A slash embeddings models um, within your workflows and within your, your life and your businesses to make them more efficient. And we are going to be adding native support for this Q&A model directly within Riku. You know, we have all of the best large language models for text generation. We have all of the best large language models for image generation. And we've started to add models now for summarization, translation, and Q&A slash embedding. So if you're interested in checking out a central hub to experiment, test, deploy, and enjoy all things AI, consider checking out Riku today at riku.ai. We have a five-day free trial, and we'd love to help you out with your AI needs. Thank you.